think it's funny. But anyway, we can go ahead and uh, move on here. So um, let's talk about uh, ex-NFL player Michael Orr. Yep, yep. Um, you know, he found out here just recently that the Tui family that, you know, supposedly had adopted him and they made the movie The Blind Side about, found out that they never fully adopted him. They actually only did a conservatorship on him, which is kind of what Britney Spears went through. Dang. It's just basically where somebody has control over your shit. You know what I mean? It's not like they're claiming you as family. It's just that, you know, they're putting themselves in control of you of you financially and, you know, uh, uh, on paper and shit like that. Damn, so, so they basically made this nigga a slave. Right. Slave. And so, you know, he feels like he's owed a lot of money and stuff like that. And I think that's really messed up because he said that he was led to believe that they had actually adopted him. Now, they are saying that they didn't adopt him because of him being 18 and uh, he was 18 at the time, which I don't think that makes a difference. You can still adopt somebody when they're a full adult. You know what I mean? People do that shit all the time. I've seen people do that shit. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I think that's a lame-ass excuse. Now, if y'all can pro pro produce proof that the government said, oh, we couldn't adopt him uh, because he was 18 or older, we had to do a conservatorship. Even if that's the case, you still made him believe he was fully adopted, like as a family member, not just we in charge of you, nigga. You know Damn. what I mean? Uh, it's like, come on, man, don't do that to somebody. At least explain to them he was old enough. He wasn't like some five-year-old who didn't know shit. He was, yeah, yeah. he was 18, so you could have told him, look, here's the way we're going to do it. And, you know, it's going to put us in charge of you financially. And, you know, all the money stuff, we'll handle that, but we'll break you off, blah, blah, blah. But y'all didn't do that. No, that you know what I mean? Y'all kind of hid stuff from this man. So I don't blame him for being mad. And he's, from what I understand, he's suing them. So what is your take on this whole thing? Sue the hell out of them. <laughs> right. Matter of fact, what you, need, you know, what you need to do, you need to get you, you need to go to the store, get you a whip, and start whipping them motherfuckers like this. <laughs> Not a say, whip. Yeah, and take them motherfuckers back in 1865. Whip wow. them. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, before, before June 19th. Right. Before June 19th. Take it back to 1865. Right. Before June 19th. Hell. And whip right. they add do the little, <laughs> Like do Jamie Foxx did in Django. Yeah, yeah. Do the little Man. double. The, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do the little double swing. Like, ah, that double swing Wait, with that. Double that, 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 that rip. <laughs> ah, ah, whip you know they add. Yeah. yeah, man, definitely. You know, that's uh, wrong of them. So, you know, of course, yeah. the family's going to deny it. No, we didn't do anything wrong, you know. Oh. But, you know, I mean, the facts are the facts. A conservatorship is not an adoption, and that shit should have been made clear to him. That's nowhere near an adoption. Yeah, y'all. Yep. You know what I mean? That's yeah. like that's like when somebody dies and you do, like, a power of attorney. I'm yeah. not adopting this person. I'm just taking over their financial shit, their paperwork. You know what I mean? So, come on. Yeah, they, like, when you know, when they're trying to hide stuff and everything like that, but like you said, if, if they explain explain it to him, and they could have done that, but no, nah, they wanted all the money for themselves and yeah. use him, yeah, use him to make make them rich. But then he got a, you know what I'm saying? That's bullshit. Yeah, he didn't get paid off the blind side movie or none of that shit. You know, they got all the money from that. Yeah. So you know, I just think it's kind of um, you know foul to do some shit like they that. They probably man. on TV. Yeah, you know what? We take care of our nigga. Right. I mean, the, the <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, again, just jokes, y'all. Just jokes. But um, but yeah, man, it's foul, man. I hope that you know he gets the final uh, proper comp uh, compensation from that. So um, before we uh, wrap it up, you know, we got to talk about hip hop's fiftieth anniversary. Yep, um, yep, and, yep. And, am I leaving out anything? Because I, I I went through my checklist and I might have forgot some topics, but. I believe I think this we is the covered, last one. I okay. think we covered everything. So, you know, we had Hip Hop's 50th anniversary uh, back on the 11th, which was last Friday. Um, you know, and they celebrated big, man. They did a big joint in Yankee Stadium. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Is it, is it, was yeah. it Friday? Was it yeah, Saturday? I think they did the Yankee Stadium. I think they had, for what I understand, they did, I think Friday was Yankee. Yeah, Friday was Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Because that was the actual day, the day after they did something. But the day of the, the actual anniversary, is it the 11th? Or yeah, it was the, the 11th. 11th. Okay, okay. So the, I couldn't remember. For yeah, so the next day, they had something out in the park, and that was free. Yeah, and like, which is dope. Yeah, I heard, like, Fat Joe, like, 
Tory. Oh, Damn, yeah, that's dude. what's up, man. Like, he did like Flojo and brought wow. and brought out the. He brought out the ITC. Wow, and, yeah. that's what's up. That's man. that's what I that's what I, I heard. mean. You can't represent without the ITC, man. I mean, they made a huge impact, especially on Bronx culture. I mean, you had Lord Finesse. I mean, he was one of the dopest lyricists. You had uh, Showbiz and AG. I mean, they was killing the game. Yep. You had Big L, you know what I mean, representing Harlem. I mean, you had Diamond D. One I mean, come best, on, one man. One of the best rapper producers. Man, they was just like the one of the dopest conglomerates in hip-hop, man. Who else they had? Did I, did I miss anybody? Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Fat Joe was an honorary Fat member, Joe. of course. Um, uh, but it was... Uh, I feel like it's somebody else. At least one other Not actor. Wild Child, but Buck, was it Buck Wild or something? I'm not sure. But, you know, either way, you know, that's that's you know that's, that's it, man. Y'all, y'all go back and listen to anything with DITC, Digging in the Crates. And you going you gonna have uh oh man <laughs> you gonna have a good day of listening to music. Shit, man. Uh represent joint you know, the Michael Big Gill, the one the kick flames guy know him with Sandy Gar with Jim C to the grave, yo. Yo, that yes, shit the represent joint. Represent, yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh Nas said Big L was the one rapper that he was actually scared of when he first came out. He was like, yo, this dude, I don't know if I can fuck with him. Nah, Big L so, uh, monster. Yeah, yeah man. Ah uh, shoot, yeah. If he, if Big Al would have lived and got the machine behind him, yeah, you wouldn't be hearing about Jay Z. Exactly. I'm gonna tell you that exactly. right now. Yeah, man. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You would have heard. Yeah, I mean, I think Nas would have been okay. Yeah, yeah, I think he'd have been okay, but he probably wouldn't have been. Imagine as... if him and Al did some songs together. Man. Oh, oh and that would have been. That would have been epic. That would been epic. <laughs> But yeah, man, and uh, you know, let's give some shout outs to some other people who we need to be celebrating for the hip hop 50th. Let's give a well, shout out to do, like. We do need to shout out Nas because he brought out Cool G Rap nah, with the yep. fast lane. Yeah, yep. man, he did that shout with the Cool G Rap. Yep. That, that's a classic right there, man. Living the fast life with fast cars. Everywhere we go, people know. Oh, who we and are. he brought out Lauren Hill. Oh, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah they brought up. out Lauren Hill for, um, you know, his song, you know, the I Rule the World, you know, the. Um, Damn, not with I rule the world, but what's not the message? What the hell that song is it? Out? Not if I rule the world. Yeah, it is. That's what he did with Lauren Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah he did yeah. two with her. That he did one on um one of the old uh not one of the old uh, King's Disease. He did one. Yeah, one yeah, on yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. The original was if I rule the world. They did. <clears throat> that's one thing I will say. They made like a. They definitely made like a good. Team, yeah. yeah, that's one. They could have done a dope album. Yeah, too, I man. would love to hear like a Nas and Lauren Hill album collab. Speaking of collab albums, y'all should go back and listen to the Nas and Damian Marley collab. I album. do need that to listen is to dope. That. I had a copy of that. I don't know what I did with it over the years, but I might still have it somewhere. Um, you yeah, know, hide in a yeah, box. Yeah, buy and get the whole thing. Right, he might. He probably he sold it for the Man, that time. shit fire. Yeah, man. I know you five dollars. Let me get cracked. It's two good artists, baby. Let me get two. Let me get one per artist. Artist. One per artist. <laughs> <laughs> two niggas on this you know shit. I mean? Look, them Hennessy prices ain't fucking with it. You know, right. math, math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, that's so funny, yeah. man. But yeah, shout out to Nas because that was a dope collab album. Um, and uh, one thing I saw that was kind of messed up: uh, the Cold Crush was able to do a performance, but it was messed up because Sha Rock was trying to get in on the 50th and they did not allow her to perform. So Cold Crush invited her on stage and allowed her to just sit on stage while they were performing. Yeah, she was not allowed to perform. Shout out to the yeah, Cold man. Crush. That's so, man, that's dope. That's love right Shout there, Shout out man. to the Cold Crush. You that's young so rappers need to take a note from that, man, because that's how you support your fellow artists, you know. Yeah, what I mean? that's messed up, man. I mean, especially for her. I mean, I know we had the argument with uh, who's the first MC, female MC, you know, hip hop. If she wasn't the first, she won the first. She she right, deserved right. to be there. Yeah, man. Shout definitely. out MC. Uh, shout out uh, Shout Rock. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I definitely uh, felt bad seeing that, but I'm glad that they did that because she said what happened was um, they tried to you know make her feel better by saying, "Oh, we'll give you a ticket. You can attend the show and just sit in the audience." She's like, nah. Like, bitch! What the fuck am I doing in the Motherfucker, audience? Motherfucker, I knew who the fuck I am! 
I mean, she goes back to the seventies hip hop, not just the eighties. The yeah, 70s, it's like you know what I mean. Come on, when I was when y'all up there listening to hip, when y'all listen to hip hop, y'all came along. When you know what I'm saying, when she came along, y'all probably you know y'all probably like still in your dad's nutsack. Right. Damn near hit the wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yo, y'all stupid as hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, shout out to MC Shaw Rock, man. The, you know, the pioneer. Um, you know, they was one of the first, if not the first, I'm not sure, they might have been the first, the first group to perform on Saturday Night Live back in the 70s. Oh, yeah. For her and the Funky Four. So, uh, I you know, it was that's 1981. Was it 81? I, I thought, thought it was, it was the 80. 70s when they did that. I might be wrong. We'll have to fact check that out. We'll fact check that. And by the time this is uh, loaded up and uh, edited for YouTube, I'll have it on screen. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, man. And then, you know, I want to also give a shout out to the Fat Boys for the 50th because they had a big impact on hip hop. You know, we, yeah. we lost two of them. Uh, uh, Buffy, a.k.a. Dan Robinson. We also lost Prince Marky D. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, Cool Rock Ski is still alive and kicking. So shout out to all of them because they were... They were huge for me, man. I mean, I could listen to the Fat Boys all day. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, man. Fat Boys. Especially the beatbox. I can't do the... Stick them. Ha, ha, Stick them. Stick them. Ha, ha, Stick them. <laughs> yeah, man. That's my joint. So, yeah. Shout out to them. Shout out to Curtis Blow. You know, my namesake. You know what I mean? For being uh, known as the king of rap at one point. He's say, still alive and kicking. Say basketball. in famous boy. I like the way they dribble up, up and down, down the court. <laughs> he had the joint. Uh, I remember one of my favorite joints from him was called AJ Scratch because his DJ was AJ. AJ. Yeah. You want to see it. AJ. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Woo. <laughs> yep, yep. And he was the original If I Rule the World. So that's where Nas yep, came from. Yep, yep, you know yep. what I mean? If I Rule the World. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's where it came from, from him. So yeah, you know what I mean? I love him, love him, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let's stop. And, yes, um, and um, you know, I mean, I like, you know, when people do remakes. Like, you know, remember when Bow Wow did the remake of uh, Playing Basketball? They're playing basketball. Oh, yeah, he did a, yeah, he did a good remake on it. We love that basketball. Yeah, he did. So, yeah, that was dope. You know what I mean? But, um. But yeah, and uh, Run DMC, we got to shout them out, you know what I mean? Because they were trendsetters and really pushing the culture forward. Yeah, shout you out know. to DMC, you yeah, know, personally. Man. Yeah, DMC personally, because he granted us a nice interview. Yep, yep. You know, we met him at Comic-Con a few years ago. Yep. Um, that was, man, that was, um, I was on a high for, for many days after that, man. Yeah, like, yeah, Yo, yeah, yeah. Can't even believe we was even in the same room as this man. Um, we'll you know, I got a copy of one of his comics and I got it signed. Uh, so, yeah, that dude is just an extraordinary dude. And I remember my favorite part of that interview was when we uh, asked him about his favorite rappers in the version of superheroes that they would be. Man, when he talked about Chuck D. Yeah. Oh, man. my God. Yeah, Chuck he, D is God, I mean, man. No, you like, could, you could just tell he reverenced Chuck D. Man. Yeah, man. So uh, and he was out before Chuck D. You know what yeah. I mean? So, you know. But, yeah, he said when he heard Chuck D, he just knew the heavens were speaking. Um, so, yeah, Chuck D and Public Enemy, we got to shout them out. Yep, yep. Got to shout out the Cold Crush because they opened doors Grand and Master never K got. Grandmaster Cass. Yeah, man. Specifically cool. Grandmaster Cass. Exactly. And they never got a lot of credit. Um, they got ripped off financially. They got ripped off, man, because they should be freaking billionaires right now. But, um. So they, they are pioneers, you know, let's see, Kumo D, The Treacherous Three, you know what I mean? Busy B, Love Bug, Starsky, you know what I mean? Rest in peace. Yeah, man. Rest in peace. Um, let me see, uh, who else we got? Spoonie G, uh, uh Schoolie D, you know what I mean? PSK. Rigging that green. People always saying What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know what it is. Good. Um Let's see, who else we got? Uh, there was a group called the Skinny Boys, you know what I mean? They was dope, you know what I mean? 
Um, you know, where were they at? They were, they were uh, out of New York too, I believe. But um, they had a couple of hit songs. They still actually out there performing. Okay, that's uh, what's I up. followed them on Instagram. They still got actually have an Instagram page and all of that. So that's what's up. Because that's funny that you said that. Because um, I mean, I didn't know they're like teen, like a, you know, they started off as teenagers. Yeah. But uh, that's one thing that uh, Doggy Dog was saying. Like we don't really talk about like some of the young people. At that time, that was like Shaheen, Chris Cross, the youngsters. Yeah. The youngsters out of Philly. So exactly, like, yeah, man. man. Philly, was, man. Philly came a long way. We had what, Steady B, Cool C out of Philly, youngsters, Muhammadia. I mean, come on. Three times, three times. Three times dope. dope. Come on, man. Three times dope. Well, if we did a little bit breakdown, the in, in effect, yep. which I kind of fucked up. But that, man, yeah, look, that was, that was a hell of a breakdown. Yeah, man. that was a good one, man. Yeah. Steady B was that dude, man. I, we bought that album, me and my brother. I can't remember which one of us purchased it, but we got a copy when that first came out. That first, very first album. It was just such a dope concept, man. And they was, you know, making good music. And um, I did the, uh, the EST haircut one time, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, didn't, it didn't come out that great, but I tried it. You know what I mean? I tried it. So, yeah, yeah, Nicholas won. Yeah, yeah great man. man, uh. man <laughs> that was my dude. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, we have Beanie Siegel and uh, uh, State Property out of Philly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We got R.J. Payne representing Philly. Who else? Cassidy, Cash Money, um, and Marvelous. Cash Money and Marvelous. All oh, the ugly people be, be quiet. quiet. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. Hey, Cash, tell mm -hmm. me what you're the king of. Turntable, up the turntable, up the turntable, up the turntable. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, Philly's in the building. Will oh, Smith dude. came out of Philly. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, man, we... uh the boy smack rap. Right, <laughs> right. Boy smacking it. Boy smacking it. Yo, don't be no, 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 uh, but yeah, that's you know Philly is representing in the building. Jill e from the Rough Riders, you know what I mean. So she did it big for Philly. But anyway, uh, who else can we represent? Let's give some shout outs. Who else? Um, let's go back a little bit to the earlier days of uh, hip hop. Let's give a shout out to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Jill, Jill. Andre Harrell represented big time. Rest in peace. Uh, I did a peace. tribute to them. Uh, you know, cause they one of my favorite joints from them was uh, a song called AM, PM, and they had a part of that song called Shark Rap, and so I did a little tribute to them on that. Um, man, me and my brother used to go bananas over that part, you know, the Shark Rap. I don't know why that shit do, it just resonated with us so dope. Uh, so shout out to them, and rest in peace to uh, Andre Harrell. I'm not sure if the other guy uh, passed away or not, but I know Andre Harrell did. Um, who else? Uh, any other uh, groups that I that you can think of? Funky Four Plus More and More. Let's see. Fantastic Five. Fantastic Five. Grandmaster Five. The Furious Five. You know, that was the thing you did back in the day. You had to put a number in your name because the Fat Boys, they was originally called the Disco Three. Three. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Man. The Disco Three. But they had actually taken that name from another group that was called the Disco Three. But they, I think the other group did more like singing music. And um, so the Fat Boys just kind of adopted that as a rap group, but then they later changed it to the Fat Boys once they realized, yeah, that we don't want to keep using the same name as somebody else. So and the Fat Boys kind of fit them, you yeah, know, yeah, especially for what they were doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember that movie they had? They used to come these? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, that's a classic, man. Classic. I got a look, man. Me and my nephew got to sit down and watch that because he's a hip hop head too. He loves old school hip hop. He's only twenty one. And he loves old school. Man, me and him will sit back and listen to shit like Kumo D and all that. Uh, Kid and Play, shout out to them. Oh, yeah, you know shout out. Mean? Oh, I've thing. seen like a little thing that Kid and Play was talking about how they brought up, you know, you know, they, you know, they would, Salt and Pepper brought them in. I didn't know that. Yeah. Salt yeah. and Pepper broke them in. Yeah. But then, you know, he said, yeah, we broke in people like Martin Lawrence. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you seen the Salt and Pepper movie that they did on Lifetime? They actually showed it on how they met Martin Lawrence. Yeah, and Martin and Lawrence. And playing all of them. So, yeah. They, and they, they um, I was trying to think of the other guy uh, that was on Living Cup. Is it Tommy Davidson? Um, I think um, it was Tommy um, Davidson. 
Tommy Davidson was on Living Color, was it? Well, I think he. I think they talked about him. They talked about Kwame. Yeah, yeah man. So, we, you know, so, yeah, we we broke we broke them in. It's like because yeah, when man. we wanted to, you know, Salt and Pepper did that for us, and it's like one of the videos that that you know, before people even know about, them, they were like the background dancers, him and uh, like Kid was like in the background. I was like, wow. Yeah, man. So yeah, man. Yeah, man. The eighties. You know one thing I will say though the eighties eighties hip hop. I mean the nineties was dope. Don't get me wrong. I think the nineties, especially like when you know we had Pop, Nas, Biggie. I even you know even though mm -hmm. I don't really I have to give Jay Z some credit on that too. Um, you know Snoop. I mean we the Wu Tang man. like the nineties flipped it, but like yeah, the eighties I think it was definitely eighties was definitely more um, fun. Like yeah. everybody was, you know, yeah, you had you had your shits, but mm. everybody was really trying to pull in together yeah. to make it an art. Dougie Fresh, the Get Fresh Crew, Slick Rick, yep, yep, um, Chub Rock, Special yeah, Ed, come yeah, on, Chub, come on, yeah, man. those, are, yeah, those names, man. <clears throat> man. Yeah, people should respect Chub Rock, man. He did a lot, man. That. Yeah, you know, treat him right. Joy. Yeah, I'm glad Man. he got his radio show too now on XM Radio. Oh, okay, yeah. that's what's up. That's yeah, what's he up. He got his own uh, show now, so that's what's up, man. Heather B, she's uh, you know, she on XM Radio. Yep, heavy, heavy D. Heavy D, man. Listen, listen, we don't talk about heavy D enough. Like, uh, I, I knew he had the song with Michael Jackson. I did not know he had a song with Janet Jackson either. That's what um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, he did, because um, I almost forgot about that for a minute, but yeah, you're right, he did. But, like, Heavy D was, like, an anomaly, like, if you knew yeah. what he did now, like, the things he did, like, he did, he did pop shit. Yeah. He did reggae, reggae rap, rap Come hardcore on, rap, yep. posse groups. Mm -hmm. Like, he did a whole plethora. Yeah, man. But he people would, well but yeah, yeah, he, yeah. But you wouldn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and people respect him for him. Because, like, like, man, have to do everything, man. Yeah, and y'all, you know, in the comments, let us know who was, like, some of the first hip-hop artists that you heard. Like, what's your earliest memories yeah, yeah, of hip-hop yeah, that, that kind of influenced you? Even if you, like, a new Jack, you were born in the 2000s and whatnot, you just, like, 20-something years old. Who was the first hip-hop um acts that you heard that really made you just love that genre of music uh for me it was like you know run dmc the fat boys i mean that's when i really just fell in love with it but i mean i heard rap before them but they just really had me just going <coughs> mind blown you know of course you had um jam on it nucleus you know what i mean that was the first record i ever bought allow me to introduce myself my name is buddy b and i'm a yeah, I Jam can't. on Protection MC, because yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I forgot the lyrics on that one. I forgot. You know what I mean? That's, that's my joint, though. I wish I still had that record, man. I, I'm so mad I lost that one, but I had that at um, one point. That was the first record I ever bought. Um, all of the um, people who were down with um, First Priority, like Top Billing, uh, Audio 2, MC Light, all of those, you know, it was a bunch of acts that came out of there, Positive K. Uh, I remember this dude named Barshaw. He was dope. I really wish he kept making music. Um, uh, what's another group? What was the other group? Um, Alliance. They were dope. You know what I mean? Um, who else? Let's go back. Uh, Antoinette. You know, was if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't really have a big thing with MC Light. You know, she helped MC Light kind of give her yeah. career. Roxanne Chante, UTFO. You know what I mean? It all just blends together, man. You know, y'all got to understand, these are people who really help to kick those doors in. You know what I mean? LL Cool J. LL Cool J. You gotta give it up. Absolutely. I mean, the man is still dropping music to this day. He came out in, what, 85? Yep. You know what I mean? So he about to be, uh, what, 30 years? Um, uh, in a couple oh, years. More than 30. Yeah. Down, down there about, yeah, shit, 80, 85. 40 95. years. So yeah, in a couple of years, it'll be 40 years. My bad. Nah, it'll be 50. Yeah, 85. So, wait a minute, 95. 85, 95. 2005. 2005. 
2015. 2015. Oh, yeah, before. So, 40, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, look, look, but, man, uh, I went yeah. to train. Nah. <laughs> I had to take yeah, off my yeah. shoes to count this shit. We both ain't got it all. Yeah. We, got it. we got to start counting our fingers and yeah, shit. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> but, uh, math ain't math. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, shout out to L, man, because he really kicked in some doors, man. Yep. You know, he's going up against a lot of people like Kumo D, Ice T. You know, him and Ice T, cool. Him and Kumo D squashed their joint. You know what I mean? So, uh, him and cool. Cannabis went up against each other. You yeah, know what I mean? Cool J was really like, I mean, he was really the equivalent. I, I mean, him and Hammer are probably the equivalent of Michael Jackson in rap. Mm. Okay, okay. As far as influence, influence and like what, like, you know, where they was at. Like, you know what I'm saying? They weren't as big as Michael Jackson, obviously, but they yeah. were like the equivalent. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But yeah, man. Um, but yeah, just want to shout out as many people as we can for Hip Hop's 50th, man. Oh, I mean, this is huge. Let's do the South Ghetto Boys. Yeah, Ghetto Boys, they represent. Yeah, they um, thought he had cane, but let's go, Metal Flower. <laughs> yeah, I know that about that gold Metal Flower, bro. You know what I mean? Willie D, uh, country ass, what? Three black crippled, crazy, crazy senior, senior citizens. citizens. I live That's by my dude small. right there, man. He's still doing his thing. Yo, you know yo, I mean? Willie D. Um, so, yeah, man, um, the Ghetto Boys, you know, all of those dudes that represented UGK. M8 uh, Ball, MJG. Man, what? Triple Ball. Six. Man. Yep. Three Six Mafia, yeah, man. Six. Y'all better recognize all yeah. of that, man. Um, so, yeah, man. Oh, Goody Mob. That's where, Goody Mob. That's where, you know, cool, that's where uh, CeeLo came from. Mm -hmm. All y'all like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, don't, I like that song. Don't, I do don't, like that joke. I like that joke. But y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't remember who's that peak. They can put who's my fam in my window. Pow. Nobody, Nobody now. Me and my family moving our apartment complex of neighborhood that was full of vex. They claim that this neighborhood is drove drug free, but they don't look that way to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, see, look, we kind of messed that up. They said, they, are they trying to keep crime out or keep our right, ass that's it, man. man. Come on, listen. Come on, man. Come that Goody Mall. That was the truth right that there. That Goody Mall album. Yeah, man. They represent a big for man. the town. You know, they gave birth to groups like Outkast yes, and, and yeah. Ludacris and all of them, man. Yeah, Luda. Luda, man, that's one of my favorites. Uh, you know, all of them, T.I. and all of them represented for the South. Jeezy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been snug like a bug in the rough? <laughs> nah, man, stop. <laughs> Jeezy uh, come up with that one. <laughs> nah, yeah. the Usher remix. <laughs> yeah, listen, yeah, that would be hilarious. Nah, because... <laughs> Me and, me and Brittany do that all the time because, like, when that part come up, like, you ever made love to, to a, a thug, thug in the club? So we go, we ever been snug like a bug in the room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. Yo, Jesus, we just fucking, man. We just fucking <laughs> with you, man. It's just, it just oh, jokes. Yeah, it's just jokes. It, it's, it's, Please. <laughs> We, we just love hip hop. We man. love you know hip hop, I mean? man. And we appreciate your uh, contribution for real. Yeah, man. Big boy don't get enough shine either, facts, man. Facts, facts. Man, out off of Outcast. A lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, all praise the, you know, three stacks. But, yeah, you know, yeah. Big boy, Big boy just needs to doing get some thing. more recognition too, man. Um, I heard three stacks might be working on something, man. It's a rumor, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but still, I would love to hear something from three stacks, man. Yeah, I mean, but I feel, I feel him when you know. I think when they when he did that interview with uh, Rick Rubin, which I I didn't really get a chance to look look at it, but the clip was like, man, it's just really no, it's no competition. Like, yeah, you, man. like I'm already I've done this, I yeah. done, all, and that no one else ain't really ain't nothing out there to make me strive to be like, oh, I'm gonna do this, because right. I mean that's the thing. That's the thing, and I think that's the thing I kind of get with Melly Mel going back to him. It's just like, he, you know, as an MC, we do, you know what I'm saying, they do feed off each other. Right, so if you right. putting out some good product, it's like, oh, man, that shit, nice. I'm, I'm going to go in there and fucking 
write some shit, fuck that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I kind of get, although, I mean, the people that he was shooting at, I mean, don't get me wrong, they they nice, you know what I'm saying? But but I, I understand that, like, you know what I'm saying? As a, you know, as a fan looking in, looking outside from like the MC perspective. I right, like that. exactly. So... But yeah, man. So, you know, y'all do your best to celebrate hip hop's 50th anniversary. Yeah, man, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm sure we're going to make it to 100 one day. But, uh, you know, oh. right now we got to celebrate for the 50, you know. So, you know, shout out to all those who kicked in those doors. And shout out to the Midwest, Detroit. Man, come uh, on, man. We got Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, all of those who represented for like. Uh, uh, New Orleans, like no. Master P and No Limit Soul. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, Shake this motherfucking P. <laughs> Paint for the air for the Yeah, man. <laughs> cash money, all of them. Yeah, man. So they represented New Orleans real big time, man. So, um, but yeah, man, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, we just wanted, I just wanted to take some yeah. time to get those shout outs, man. Because, oh, uh, for the West, real quick, I definitely got to shout out Miss uh, Mix Master Spade. Man. Okay, okay, yeah, we got yeah. That, King man. T, yeah, come King on, T, man, come on, man, come on, man, uh, God, uh, that from uh, the West, man. Let's see who else we got. Sir Mix a lot was out West, right? Yeah, um, I mean, that was what, well, that's still West, though, yeah, but now, nah, Sir Mix a lot really don't get the props he deserves, you know, you know, he really don't because, like, a lot of you know. The big butts that's in here now, that was because of him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, now it took white people ten years to light the damn song when it came. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. But you know what I'm saying? But you see what I did? <laughs> you see what he did? <laughs> but but the uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He he made it to be cool. Like, hey, it's okay to have a yeah monstrous body. It's okay to have a. I mean. Obviously, he was, you know, gearing that towards, like, black women. But just anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you know, he kind of pushed that. Yeah, you and know? I mean, without him, you wouldn't have one of Nick, uh, Nicki Minaj's biggest hits, that Anaconda song. You know what I mean? Anaconda told one. Yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, yeah, he influenced a uh, whole generation, man. Um, King T was one of my favorites from the West King Coast, T. man. Him and the Alcoholics. Oh, my oh God. yeah. The Alcoholics, man. Come they, on now. They were definitely like, to me, they were definitely like the black version of the Beastie Boys. Yeah, absolutely. They That's, they <laughs> were, that's what they were to me, but they were definitely dope. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out uh, Too Short. Too e Short. 40, yeah, man. Spice One. NWA. Spice One. Oh, Spice man. He's one. another one. Spice One don't get enough credit. Uh, MC8 don't get enough credit. Yeah, MC8. Come man. on, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dre. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, man, you know, I don't want to hold y'all too long because yeah. we can talk about, you know, yeah, hip-hop shout-outs all, all day, day, man. But, uh, you know, just take a moment to reflect on some of your favorite hip-hop groups and acts and, you know, what what who was the earliest memories you had in hip-hop. And if we miss some, um, please charge it to our head. No, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, you know, some, you know, it's a, it's just a plethora of y'all. So, y'all, you know, some people, you know, some things will be, you know, omitted. Yeah, But, yeah. you know, not out of like, oh, fuck them. It's just, you know, trying to, it's hard to keep all this yeah. in your head. But, yeah, definitely, man. Um Oh, one more. I just remember the Mercedes lady. Shout yeah, out to yeah, them. yeah, yeah. I got it. They got a book out too. I want to get that book. So anyway, man. Yeah. Um. Did you want to drop anything else before we wrap up the show? Nah, I think that's it, man. Remember to like, share, share subscribe, like, like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. We need, we need funds. Fun. Allocated so we can build, build the, the school, school of hip hop. Yes, sir. School of hard knocks and hip hop. Yeah, we standing by. Yes, sir. Operate. We got we got the man that usually work for Jerry's kids. Yes, sir. Working on our shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> we working on our shit right now. Right, right now. Well, yeah, man. So uh yeah, man. this has been episode 251. 251. And once again, we appreciate y'all. This yes, is yes. your man Kurt, and this is Howie. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Oh.